Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to our little cute roguelike tutorial. And today I'm going to confess I lied last time around. I lied. I lied to you. Um, so I said last time around I wanted to do like a pathfinding function today, but that's um, I, I changed my mind. That's not that's not, that's not what we do. That's not what we are going to do today. Instead, I wanted to actually take advantage of a function that we wrote last time around. If you remember, last time around we wrote the line of sight function, and there is like an obvious <coughs> application of the line of sight function that I completely forgot about. Sorry, I'm making some tea here. <laughs> oh, by the way, invisible cup. I love it. Um, so let me row uh, pork, pork city city pork. The obvious. No, <laughs> load pork. The obvious application of the line of sight function <coughs> is to do the fog of war thing, where you start like with a, like a small um, uh, dark area and you slowly uncover the dark area as you move around. And there's like I think two main reasons for that. One of the reasons is um, why we want to have like this kind of mechanic. One of the reasons is that um, it. It's, it looks nice. It's kind of like adds a lot of atmosphere because it's kind of like, you know, this dark murky dungeon and you go through this dark murky dungeon and there's like danger around every corner, but you don't know what it is. And it's like, oh no, there is an enemy. Um, so that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is like, it's actually gameplay wise. It's, it makes a lot of things a lot more interesting um, because there's suddenly a lot of like hidden information involved, uh, a lot more exploration involved. Um, if you launch this, you look at this, it's like, oh, um, it's all in plain sight. You know, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> so is there's like not even like a labyrinth pathfinding kind of like um, look. You not even have to look for the exit. You see it there. You know exactly how to get there. Uh, and when the map is map is covered at the beginning, you at least there's some more gameplay going on. But before we go there, uh, I want to do some a bit of a housekeeping there. Uh, I'm recording everything like a lot of episodes in one go, so I haven't been able to keep up with the comments. Obviously, there's probably some really good comments there, but today is not the time. Uh, today is not the episode where we're going to address them. But I found some little details myself that I want to fix. Uh, one is here in the draw function. Do you see how we're doing the do HP wind and where we actually and the little HP window where we manipulate, move it around and stuff like that? and stuff like that. <laughs> Jeez. Um, we do it after we draw the windows, which makes no sense. We should do it before we draw the windows. But actually, if you think about it, it's probably even better to do it um, in the update function because it actually just updates. It doesn't draw anything. Uh, and, you know, we kind of like mixing up stuff. We sometimes do update stuff in our draw function if it relates to visual stuff, and that's definitely a visual part. But if we can, we should like you know, split them apart. By the way, this is this is something that we should mark as if we remove the debugging, we're gonna save a bunch of tokens. Okay. Uh, there's another thing I want to be looking at, uh, which I'm not quite understanding. Look at this. I'm at zero health points. I should be dead. Why am I not dead? And now, now I'm actually dead. So it seems like at the end of the AI. We're not dying. Let me see. Um, update P turn, update AI turn. Yeah, we do the check end here. That's so that's weird, right? This is odd. How does the check end look? What does it check for? Smaller equals zero. We definitely did go back to update game, right? So why let me let me debug this out. Debug two equals p underscore mob dot hp. Let's try that. Oh look, it's not being updated. How, why? Interesting, it's not being updated. <clears throat> Maybe the way we're doing the AI animation, uh, the mob animation is wrong. Mm. 
Uh, let me clear up this a little bit. AI turn. Let me try this again. What, what's happening there? Wait, I don't see an animation. I don't see the guy actually attacking me. Do you see that? He's not actually attacking me. There's something wrong there. Um, hit mob. AI attack. So there's mob bump. Ah, the mob bump doesn't actually set the animation. Okay, that's I got it. So what we have to do here is we need to in the AI function we need to do this thing where we actually update AI turn. That's something that we want to be doing here as well. So if we are attacking attack player, there we go then we actually want to set the AI uh, turn. Now that's something that we're probably not gonna do here later on, but here in the AI, no, here in the do AI function. So that function should loop through all of the AIs and make sure that if there is an AI, if there is a mob that actually has some animation, then it will actually skip to the, um, skip, uh, it will actually set the update function to the AI turn function. And if all of the mobs are inactive or waiting or, or doing nothing, in this case, we should not actually have to wait for the AI to do st stuff. So let's see how this works now. Still doesn't work. All right. It is the correct thing. So maybe it has to do with the dx and dy. Maybe that's being calculated wrong. Oh, yeah. Like this, maybe? Nope. That's not the issue. Where is mob bump? Oh, it's mob. No, no, the, here it is. Put these in the debug function. Debug um, one, two, three equals dx dot dot dy. Zero, one. It's correct. The, just the animation doesn't play correctly. Okay. What if we set it to walk? What if what if we force it? Where we set it I'm gonna go m dot mob equals mob bump. I want I want to see this animation. It's just not happening. It's minus one, yeah, it's the correction dx and dy are correct. That's that's not, not the issue here. It just it seems like Maybe the socks is the problem. Ah, this part is missing. Yeah, now now it kind of works. Okay, good. Um, so we didn't reset the the timer down to zero. So now um, let's see if our our guy updates correctly. Yeah, and now we're dying at, at zero. That's that makes sense. I was getting worried there for a second. Hmm. Okay, so let us maybe make sure that um, our AI function actually works correctly, and we're gonna be something like local moving, moving equals false um, and we're gonna go um, moving equals task m so um, each of the tasks of um, the tasks functions um, should barf out um, if uh, whatever they did caused spawn some kind of animation for the for the mob so we know that after we went through all of this we're gonna go if moving if we are moving then 
And then in this case, we're gonna set the update to update AI turn, and we're gonna set the, the, the timer to, to zero. Something like this. So we don't have to repeat it over and over again. And then we don't need this here anymore. And then we don't need these here anymore. But we're gonna do return true. And we're gonna go here, we're gonna return true. And here, uh, <clears throat> so if there's line of sight, we, there's gonna be an aggro. So we're gonna return true even though technically there is no animation associated with it, but I just, I think like just making, adding a little bit of break there, I, th I think makes sense here. Mm, so yeah, and then otherwise return false, right? Return false. And here also return false. So you can see we're going like really fast now because there's like no, there, you don't have to wait for the for the animation of the of the, the of the little dude there to to actually launch. And now there is like this two step process where we move and they move, we move, they move, we move, they move. And now they kill us correctly. Let's see if this the um, again if if we're dying at the right moment. Yep, we're dying when we reach zero. Man, we just wasted such a long long time just to to fix the stupid bug. Do I have anything else? Oh yeah, so you might um, remember on the last time around, I don't know, maybe somebody actually posted this, um, but I, I mentioned how it's kind of a bit silly, uh, how where you remember when we, um, let's say we open here this door and we die and then we restart the game, now that the door stays open. That's not good. So we wanna maybe add a thing we want to find a way of kind of resetting the map to the way it was when the cart was launched. And actually there is a function for this. I, I looked it up. So I've been browsing the P 8 wiki and I found this little little piece of code that I, that I want to share with you. And I'm going to add it to our um, game over function. This is not going to stay forever. This is just for you guys who are really want to go to town with creating your own worlds in, in, um, in, uh, in this map think. Uh, so here in gameplay, I want to put this down on a check end. So here's this little piece of code. Are you ready? It's called reload and then a bunch of numbers. <laughs> so reload, reload function is, um, you can kind of copy um, uh, parts of a cart to your cart and you can like, this is kind of one of those functions that allow you to kind of like interact, that carts can interact with each other, but it can also like take, you know, the original content of what was previously in your cart in your program and kind of like restore it. And that's what it does. It restores the mem memory value responsible for the map. So now you see if I, if I open this door and if I open this door and then this monster arrives and they kill me, if I respawn, then you see the doors are still there. And that also allows us to, to bring back this, um, this cool way of doing the, the monster spawns 192. Uh, where it's like we're gonna set it to 192 and M set uh, back down to one. This thing. So we don't have like this orange dot as a spawning point for mobs no longer, but we can actually pick the actual mob that should spawn there. We can actually see it on the map here. And that should, if we run this, you can see there's this mob. And you know he, you can kill him. Oh, actually we can't restart the game now. We have to spawn a second mob, perhaps, so we can get killed by that other mob. Let's do like a kill room here. Okay, so we have like this mob here. Okay, and he's like we're gonna kill him. Whoops, and then we're gonna get in here, get get smashed by those mobs. We restart the game and now the mobs are being respawned even though we actually deleted their spawning points in the map. So the entire map is being restored right now. Man, look how we like, we're already so far into this episode and, and we, so far we haven't done too much new stuff. But last now we will. So um, I'm gonna create a new uh, array and that array will be responsible for the parts that are covered up or not. This is going to be called fog. 
Um, now, uh, this fog is, is, is be an array of arrays, supposed to be an array of arrays. It's, it will be a kind of like a map and uh, that we lay on top of our map, basically. That's going to be like a second layer of information for us, telling, letting us know which part of the map is covered and which part of the map is not covered. Uh, it should start at the beginning. It should start with all of the parts covered. And I'm, we have to like encode it. I'm, we'll encode it where it's like, if it's uncovered, if it's like, if you can see it, then it's going to be zero. And if you can see through it, uh, if there's if it's covered, it sh if it should be invisible, then it's going to be one. Like if the fog is there, one or not there, zero. Um, that makes sense in my in my head. Now the problem is we kind of have to like create an array of array and like array of arrays, like a two dimensional array. And um, you you might be familiar with this. I'm not sure if you already did it before, but you can do something like map or like like fog can address an array of arrays like this fog and then two things like x and y that's how you can like access like each of the first entries has another area associated with it and that's how you can create arrays that are two-dimensional that go like in, in x direction and y direction and kind of like can convey a map can store information about a map you know where you have like tiles in uh, spread apart in two coordinates um, how are we going to create one of those arrays? Uh, well, we're going to do this quite often, so it might sense to actually make a function that spawns one of these. And I actually prepared a function for this, and we're going to put it in our tools because I think that's something that we're going to use. We might be actually using for a lot of different programs. Let me see real quick. All right. So here in tools, we're going to plop this down. Blank map. So blank map uh, will return here, return an array of arrays. Uh, and the area of arrays will be actually exactly the size of our window, exactly from zero to 15. Um, we're actually starting at zero here because the map coordinates also start at zero. Uh, and there's gonna be like a default value that can, you can pass into it, but you don't have to. <clears throat> if you don't pass, pass the default value, then default value will be zero. Um, that's gonna be kind of like what kind of default value are gonna save in each individual cell of this array of array of, of this two-dimensional array and that's it and what all it does it creates like this array it makes sure that the default value is set and then uh, it loops through all of the x values and and for all of these x values it creates another array in there and then for all of the x values it loops through all of the y values and makes sure that all of these cells are set to a default value easy peasy for breezy and then ret returns it so, <clears throat> so the fog, we're going to set to blank map one. And again, uh, the way it works in my head is one is means it's full with fog. <laughs> it's, that's how I, that's how I, it could, you could do it other way around if it makes sense for you. It might actually make sense to use false and true because that might be easier to check against. However, um, one of the reasons I want to use one, zero and one is because if you have like a more sophisticated fog of war system, you might be actually using other values because we're going to have like this dumbest fog of war system ever. Like in, in Warcraft 1, if you remember Warcraft 1 or like Dune 2, uh, <laughs> if you play those old games. So they had like a fog of war system where, you know, you start out in your little settlement and then you can spread out and see more of the environment. But if you return to your settlement, you could still see what you explored. You kind of had like... <laughs> you had to establish a satellite that scanned the area that you saw previously. So if you manage to scout the base of your opponent, you could always see what your opponent is doing. Uh, you kind of uncovered that map, that map forever now, and it was now always visible to you. Then uh, later on, that was like the big, huge, like, wow, uh, advancement. Later on in Warcraft 2, the best of Warcraft, uh, you, you had like a, a multi-tier fog of war system where... Not only at the beginning you can't actually you, there, everything was black, then if you went with a unit somewhere you could see it it was uncovered, but then if you went away with the unit, it was kind of like grayed out. So it was like you could see what kind of terrain was there, or maybe some buildings of your enemy that you saw in their base, but uh, once you moved away from it, you weren't being updated about how the map changed and how the buildings were moving. You couldn't actually see the units anymore. And you know, that's how it works today with StarCraft and, and League of Legends and stuff like that, stuff like that. 
But alas, we're gonna be really old school here and we're gonna return to this old system. We're just gonna uncover the map. And if it's uncovered, you can always see it. That means that we, there's not gonna be any surprises. So if an enemy is following us and we kind of like lose, um, uh, lose them somehow and they no longer can see us, we will see them staying behind and being confused. We will be kind of like kept updated about our enemy, which I think is fine. It's, it's okay for our purposes. So, okay, we are creating this blank map. So now I want to actually, this is gonna be a long episode. <laughs> so now I want to have like actually draw the fog. And this is like the one of the most situations where we are actually a bit hampered by the fact that we're using this map system. Because we have very little, I feel like maybe there's a solution for this, but I feel like we have very little options to do anything with those tiles. We cannot actually decide how the tiles are being drawn. And, um, and so, like, I was thinking about how to pull this off, but it seems to me the best solution for this... Oh, by the way, no, it's fine. The best solution for this seems to be something, like, really stupid, where it's like, we're going to loop through everything. And then every time we're gonna go if fog x y equals one, if there is a fog, then we're gonna just draw a black, black rectangle over that. <laughs> uh, rect fill. Now we're gonna use rect fill two for now. Um, x times eight, y times eight, and then um, yeah, black. No, uh, width and height, uh, 8, 8, and then 0. That's my solution. Now we should see a black screen. Good. So now we kind of we covered everything in, in our fog of war. Um, now we want to have a function that unfogs the fog of war. So we're going to go unfog uh, function, unfog. Um, we're not going to pass, pass any parameters to it. Or we should maybe? Actually might. Yeah. Because it actually I think it doesn't actually make any difference because we would uh, we could make it so that you don't have to have to pass it any parameters for it, but then we would like create like a local SX and SY anyway to grab the coordinates from the player because we won't we don't want to be addressing the player anyway. So we might just as well do this. Um I'm gonna in an update function after I moved. Uh, update game. Um, let's let's make it before I move. So let's make it after I press the button. Or actually, let's make it here in an update game in a game function where we where we say move player. Right? Are we returning somewhere here? No, we're not. Right? Yeah, that's good. So we're gonna go at the end. We're gonna go unfog. P mob X, P mob Y. And for now, we're gonna do a very stupid uh, untile tap on fog. We're gonna go fog SX source X. Well, let's call it FX from X from Y. From X from Y equals zero. Just a very stupid unfox, just so we kind of have like a, okay, now we kind of explore the, f the, the space on which we are on. We can kind of like feel ourselves out here, okay. But now comes the more complicated one. So now we loop through all of the tiles on the map. And you might be like, that's very wasteful, but we're not, we're doing just once per button press. It's fine. It's fine. The, the system is fast enough for shenanigans like this. We're just gonna loop through, through, loop through all of the files. Whoops. People are sending in their assignments. Okay, so we are gonna loop through all of the tiles and uh, we're gonna do like a line of sight test against all of those tiles. We're gonna go if loss um, fx fy uh, xy um, then so if there is a line of sight, we're gonna unfog it. End. That's my thing. It didn't work. <laughs> Why? Why didn't it work? 
seems, seems like it should be work. Oh, I understand. It should be like this. Ah, you see now it's it's working better. Something I want to be doing. You kind of want to be unfog this at the at the beginning here. Mm, so basically here, unfog um, p uh, p underscore mob x. Mm, now that I think of it, it might be worthwhile. Actually, yeah, we, we, it might be worthwhile just leaving unfog without any parameters. I change my mind. I change my mind so often, so we don't have to always specify that we're because there's not going to be situations where we're going to unfog a part of the area that, that we can't see. So we might just as well do something like this. If your game requires that, you know how to do this. Uh, but I'm still going to use. Uh, but I actually, so I'm using the fx and fy just in one place. So actually, I might, I might just take the bullet here and just plug in those values directly. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so now you see, I'm kind of exploring this area a little bit, and it's like, oh no, dang, no. Okay, but there is, and this is going to be probably the end of our episode. We're going to have to like tweak this function later on. I'm going to just explain you a little bit um, the the problem that we have with this function, uh, and let's let's do something like this, like a very long hallway. You see the problem that's happening here. So this is a hallway we're looking down, and we can see all the way down this hallway, but we don't see the walls. We don't see the walls. So that's bad. Another issue that we have is um, if we have like a pot. That pot is actually blocking the site, and that shouldn't be the case. Or like a chest. Maybe like a chest. Those should be like in my mind. Those should be things that I should be able to look through. They shouldn't be like a monster hitting behind a pot. There should be maybe a monster hitting inside a pot, but not with, um, uh, behind it. So, um, so that's something I want to be changing. I want to be um, actually remove um, line of sight um, restrictions and um, you know whether you're able to move into it. I'm gonna I want to like decouple them. So there's like a different requirement or the, the function that checks if a tile is walkable is different from a, t a function that checks if a tile um, actually lets, uh, lets you look through it. Um, so, you know, we have to like tweak this, this function a little bit. There's, there's some stuff coming up, but you can already tell that this is a lot more interesting. Just even though the, this function is a bit broken right now, this, this makes a lot more fun. Oh, and I realized that I actually this, this, uh, this level is now unbeatable. Let's make it like this. Yeah, so this is this is a lot more interesting. You can like really explore this area now, and there's like you know this this um, you, you there's like a you, you might go down a hallway and realize that it's this, it's a dead end. It's it's really fun. Cool. So thank you so much for joining in. Sorry for like these kind of like chaotic situations here where we can like um, um, where, where we got hang up on some bugs. Uh, again, as always, the code for this episode is going to be down in the doobly doo, and you should join our discords. Uh, so you can like play test this game and maybe you ha can like change things you can like influence You know what the final version of this game is gonna be like see you on the next episode guys. Bye. Bye <laughs>